the way to where she lives. She will introduce herself in a minute, but before she introduces herself, how are you guys? How are you doing? How's life? Hope you enjoyed the parent series one, series two. We have series three here. We've been talking about parenting and we've learned a lot of lessons from that. I personally have learned a lot of lessons and I know you too have learned a lot of lessons. So there's so many lessons to learn again from her, um, her guest today. Okay, about parenting. Okay, and then the idea is to see that you're not alone and then to pick one or two things if you're a new mom, new parent to be, you know, you learn from one another. So I'm just gonna allow her guest to introduce herself in a second. Um so we you're we so welcome here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. honoring our invitation. Thank you. Uh, please introduce yourself to us. Who are you? Yes, I am uh, uh, Iwana, or we can call it Joana in English. Uh, I am originally from Romania. Uh, I'm in Ireland since 2002. Um, just that year I got married in March, and then the end of March I just arrived to Ireland, and I'm here since. Um, and I am part of a Christian church here in Shannon, in Ireland, and I'm happy to be here. I'm very <laughs> glad to have you here. It's happy Thank to you. be here, so we're, we're glad to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. So we just got to so the questions about um, parenting. That's what we're doing here on this channel. We're looking at parenting. And I know that you've been parents now. Uh, would you introduce yourself? How many children do you have? Yeah, I have two children. I have a boy, he is 17, Manuel. And I have a girl, she is 14, Emma. Emma and Emmanuel. So, so two kids. Two, two, two yeah. children. So, um, Eman uh, Emma, Emmanuel. Which Manuel is 17, 17 and Emma 14. And Emma, exactly. So um, before you become a parent, um, what's your expectation when you were a teenager? Um, what are you thinking of that oh, when I become a parent, I'm going to be this and that and that? What are your expectations before you become a parent? Yeah, I think I think as a as a child, I um, always I, I didn't have many toys. I I got as a present uh, a little doll, and I was very um, since I had that doll. I was very kind of mothering that doll, you know, I was like uh, taking care of that doll and 
you know, always kind of, oh, this is my baby and I'll do this stuff with that. And, and then I kind of started um, looking at, I, I was a child myself, but I was looking at um, little children or babies, you know, around my um, area where I was living. And I was asking their mothers if I could just, you know, take them for a walk in their buggy or, you know, just playing with them and spending some time. I, I really love to be around children and I thought, oh, this is amazing, you know, being a mother and having a child to love. And even though uh, my childhood wasn't um, anything like, like that, anything like I was thinking myself um, to be as a mother, um, I didn't grow up with, uh, being a very loved child, but um in in myself i thought wow if i will have if i will be a mother and i'll have a child i will give so much love and i will give so much thank care um thank that you child. so much so much so um as a uh, your expectation as a new um the way you get it when you become a mother you did not show uh, your children with so much love that you were actually lacking in your own yes when you were I younger think, yes yeah. So, and that's good. And uh, could you tell us your occupation, occupation first, if you don't mind? Yes, I'm a nurse uh, working with uh, learning disabilities, uh, people with special needs, and um, I love my job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was a rewarding job, anyway. It's, yes. not, about the, yes. it's not about the salary, anyway. It's about, no. you know. It's, it's about a, giving 100% of you and you uh, doing it with love. Yeah, love. So, um... Before you come to high, um, now your, your, do you want to tell us your experience as a mother? Um, what are your experiences as a mother? Okay, yeah. from uh, when I started being a mother and yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. So when I got my first baby, um, I was first of all in Ireland. I was with no family around me. The only, the only person close to me was my husband. But he was very busy with his work. Um, he was a truck driver at the time. And some people might know uh, what a truck driver works, the hours, the long hours. So I was mostly on my own with a baby. And you know, like when babies are not like dolls, they just uh, have their mouth closed and they, you do everything with them. But they demand and they cry and you do everything for them possible that you need to do for a baby and they still cry. Mm -hmm. You're like, wow, what is wrong? What else do you want me to do? And mm -hmm. I remember it was a day where my baby, doesn't matter, I changed him so many times. I fed him so many times. He was crying constantly. That child might have been in pain or I just didn't know what was wrong. And straight away I rang my mom. I put the baby down and I rang my mom and I started crying. I was like, mom. I don't know what to do. I, I don't know. This baby is like just crying, crying, crying. And it made me cry because of his crying. And my mom, um, being a tough mom, um, still at the, at the time, she says to me, well, I had four children. We were four girls growing up. And she, um, I had an alcoholic dad. So uh, he wasn't uh, beside my mom when she was uh, raising us up so she was do mostly doing that on her own plus having a job you know and raising all all four of us she said if I had the strength to uh, you know look after four children after four girls you will have the strength to look after that one baby so just get on with life and just uh, you know it will come easy but right now uh, that's what it is so i had to put the phone down and just say yes help me god and then you know i just carry on with what i had yeah. to do as a mother yeah, that was great experience i could remember i could imagine what the mom would say your mom you know and mm. i think our parents are the same and yeah. the same, you know, in that yeah. regard. I remember my own my own um mom as well at that stage. But um yes, we're talking about you. So what are the, the you father, your children are teenagers now. So um how would you describe your experience when they were like a toddler, um the youth, I mean they're still in the teenage years, the stages so far. What are your experiences? Um well, I know you've mentioned a few of the experience now that you were stuck, 
and you were the only one looking after them your husband is a bus um, truck driver but the process so far uh, what are your experiences up to this stage yeah i mean it, it wasn't easy to be honest because like we all have kids those people watching me have kids and um it is no uh, two kids there or two people there being uh, unique in any way we are all different in our own ways and um, i even saw the difference from one child to the other i always thought oh the firstborn was um you know uh, more it was listening more to me and but then again i had stages going um with him growing up as a baby he was a very uh, kind of a how less cry baby and you know like he wouldn't go to sleep easy you have to rock him until he fell asleep and finally when your ha hands will be so sore you want to put him down he'll start crying again and then you have to pick him up again and go and sing songs again and yeah it was it was hard then he came to a, a point where you know he, he would sleep in his own bed and he'll just wake up some evenings to go to bathroom he'll call us he, you know he was good he became like we i could go shopping with him and i had no issues he'll be always there under my eyes not like other kids taking off and running away um and then he came to the stage i say he was about four or five years old when they become very independent um they express their personality and um that's where it came to the point that I could never thought that a child, a five-year-old, four-year-old uh, could answer you back or could go against your uh, whatever you ask him to do or go there, go here and he'll go there or you say do this and he'll do the other way. Um, so I was like, wow, you know, this is, this is challenging. This is how will I cope with this because it was a new experience, of course. And... Um, then you know i get my my daughter and she's completely different as a baby she's just the best she just wakes up eats down for sleep sleep all day and when she's just hungry she cries a little bit you take her up give her food sleep again and never problems when she become a toddler oh my goodness when i had to take her shopping i will always always miss her in the in the shopping center <laughs> Sometimes I will even have to run to the security, say, oh, my daughter is missing. Can you call the people in the shop to look for a little girl, uh, dark hair, Emma is her name? Because, my goodness, so she was nothing like my boy. So, like you see, it's only two kids, but they were so different in, in their own ways. And, um, yeah, they, they come to that stage where um, I think they see your weakness as well and they start playing you up and then it's, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just uh, there is the time where you really need to, um, you know, to learn yourself how to do things, you know. Okay. And sometimes we, we even have to ask for help, ask our parents, our mother, our, our friends that they were mothers before us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had to ring a friend and say, how, how would you do this thing? How would you... How would you cope here? Because I don't know. I don't know. It's just new for me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, life, life, it teaches us yeah. new things. So uh, what would you say about them? Thank you for that answer. What would you say about them now that they're teenagers? Um, I, I personally thank God for um, the way they are. Um, I say, uh, you know, not to give myself credit or my husband. So we're, but we're coming back to the strengths and weakness. Yeah. Well, now that they're teenagers. They so, okay. yeah, they they're good kids. They're okay, good kids. Forward, I yeah. can I can say yeah. that they are good kids. They are they are not like uh, you know, other teenagers um going out like my son, he's seventeen. Like at this stage some some kids they will um experience experience like they go drinking, they go smoking, they, they, they will do other stuff, you know, that um unfortunately, you know, parents um will be crying about and um not pleasant but um i thank god every day for my kids and i ask him for for the protection over them and you know i i i really am pleased with where my kids are of course they they need to grow more and learn more and uh develop more and we need to discipline them every day but uh, 
I I love my kids and yeah. I, I'm so thankful they, for they, yeah. So they're yeah. good kids as a teenager. Yes. You know, so you don't experience um so don't go out, I want to go out, I want to do yeah, this. No, no. no. That's good. So um thank you for letting us know that. I think I'm just gonna address this a little bit, sorry. So um the we do thank you for that transparent. So what would you say about your strengths as a mother and what are your weaknesses as a mother when it comes to your children? Your strengths and weaknesses. Well, um the weakness I will start with that. I think um I had it from my past experience from my childhood. Uh, you know, not not being a kind of a herd, a child, and um, if you want to say I was uh, maturing myself uh, before age, if you if you know what I mean, you know, you you get more uh, bef uh, mature before your age. You mm -hmm. know, you mm -hmm. you you nearly have to look after yourself okay. uh, as a as a just child going to school, come home. Uh, you know, heat your own food, eat, uh, do your homework because your parents are out of the house yeah, and they busy. are, you know, mm -hmm. busy and they are never there for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to do all that. And um, then um, I suppose with uh, my past as well, with my childhood, I, um, as a child as well, I was, I felt I was very controlled. Um, so I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't let uh, choose, you know, for myself or make choices for myself. I was more told, you go there, you do this, um, you know, it was no choice there. And um, I think the times um, where that we live in as well, they were like kind of, um, we were poor, uh, more poor and... Um, the economy in the country and the communism and you know all this it was it was different times but um like that my mom you know i i they were so busy working and uh, making money and st still we we couldn't afford to go on holiday much uh, or if it was a, a trip from school going somewhere you have to ask your parents and you have to be refused because they say oh no not this time i don't have the money to send you in this trip so um you know you suffer as a child because then some kids are are uh, able to do those things and you can't and then you're you're asking yourself why is this you know so i grew up i think with a lot of uh, frustration and anger in myself and i think I think and um, you brought that to your your parents too. Which you brought that anger into your own yes, mind. and I uh, yeah I I got married and then I had my kids and then you know I think sometimes you just project on the others what you receive and uh, of course I I I wasn't like told um, I love you you know my mom never told me I love you so. I, I didn't even know how to say I love you to my kids. I, I didn't, um, you know, shower them with these kind words or uh, take them in my arms or uh, reading stories or doing these things. I was always finding myself very busy and even though I was at home with them, but I was like, oh, cleaning is my thing. So I, I, I developed this OCD all the time around my house had to be clean. Even though the kids were there, they weren't allowed to do much because my house has, had to be clean. And that was my priority. And um, so then I think it came to a stage where it got very, very bad. Um, my husband could see this. My, my sister could see this. People around me could see if they were coming to my house. Uh, the way I was even cleaning in front of my visitors, you know. I had to take the cup straight away, put it in the dishwasher. And... You know, if it was crumbs on the floor, I will just, you know, swap the floor right there. And that that's not normal, really, for, for someone to behave like that. But I, I didn't know at the time. And then um, I had I had my sister 
especially I thank her for um, you know telling me that I should try uh, some therapy just just to deal with my past with my anger issues and all this because this is not good I, I started like uh, being angry with my kids for a any little thing they were they were doing not knowing that actually they are developing that they just that's their personality that's mm -hmm. how they're supposed to be but for me it was like oh because i was controlled mm -hmm. i wanted to control them and i want them to do exactly what i tell them not what they want not to give them choices and uh, that was my weakness and then i had mm -hmm. to go uh, to therapy and counseling and that's where um, things changed and i understood i understood where all these issues uh, it's coming uh, to me that it's from my past and and um, so then when I understood those things I had to so when I understood um, in the therapy why these issues were there I had to um, you know really make the effort to change everything about it was those years that I did that to my kids and now I had to change in the direction where okay uh, they need to to hear that they are loved they need to see from me that I love them to show them this to um, you know ask them uh, what they want what they like because I didn't know those things because it was like what I like what I wanted for them but now it was like giving them a, a a voice let them voice themselves you know and tell me uh, what they and like that the relationship with my kids then changed and uh, we grew um, you know we, we became like friends um, more than if you want to say you have the relationship ma mother and uh, uh, children uh, where you put boundaries and you discipline them and you have limits but then you have to be like their friend and to listen to their story, to listen to what they have to, to say, to help them in their growth and be there for them. And I think what is very important is to be, and what my strength is, um, because uh, I, I become a Christian when I was 17, 18, and um, since I know God, uh, you know, God is, is being my strength in in all this time and he brought me through things that nobody could and when when i couldn't go to my mother or i couldn't go to a friend to ring and to cry about uh, some stuff from my life i will go straight to god in in the prayer and i will just cry out to him and say god this is this is the problem i deal with and then tomorrow I will get up again and it'll be a new day and I will just see that things are working, things are uh, going differently and um, so that that the strength is that, um, you know, more than telling my kids about church and about uh, how to be a good person and how to live for God, I will show them myself. So I have to be the mirror for them. I have to be right. the good example for them mm -hmm. and myself and my husband and, um, you know, uh, continuing to go to church and bring the kids along with us they will hear things themselves they will see things for themselves not it's like I will tell them and I say oh you have to go to church you have to do this first I have to go and then I'll bring the kids with me and then they will see what what is there what is good for them thank you so much for um, sharing that your weaknesses and your strengths with us there's yes. a lot of lessons to learn there um, you mentioned that you brought your um, your the way you were parented when you were younger. You brought it into your own. Yes. And it unconsciously. Yes. You were bringing. I mean, you throw all the you transfer all the aggression yes. to your children, like the hunger. But I love the fact that at the end of the day, you came to realization, and then you said you needed the help, and then you go for the help, and then. You make that conscious effort to change and have a relationship mm. with your children. And that was a great, 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 at the end of the day, you, you, there was a turnaround. And yes. because you you realize, if you come to self-realization and self-awareness, that, oh, I, I'm doing this, and you didn't know you were doing that. I had that the same experience because I, my, my daughter, 
and came back from school one day and I said, and I said, the house is dirty during the COVID. And I, and I called him, my first daughter. And I said, the house is dirty. And she said, she said, I'm not the one that did it, the others. I said, but you were it. And I said, that's it, mommy. And she just ran off, said to the toilet and locked herself in the toilet. And I said, what's going on here? And I said, this, this is what you did when I was here. Okay. So we sat down, we talked about it. And I realized, and I had to like, I'm training you. I waited for her to come out of the toilet. I had to sat her down and I apologized. Mm -hmm. I said, I, tra I was training. Mm -hmm. That was the way we were trained, and I was bringing that back to you. So she hold on to that, mm -hmm. even though that helped her in school, but still, yes. it wasn't right. That moment, I took a wrong turn around myself, and, you know, I hold up to that, and I apologize for that, and then, you know, and forgotten that they are not the same culture with me. They, I came from Nigerian culture, and they were born here. And I was throwing my culture on top of their head, you know. So it's good to hear that you come to civilization and then you turn around and you change things. Yes. And then you'll be able to amend. And there was no, there was, there, there's, there's not, no time limits. You can always make that turn as that. Absolutely. When you understand that, Absolutely. okay, this has to be done. And you have to hold it yourself. And you have to come down to the level and say, I'm sorry, you're, you were not too big. Because if you are too big to come down to the level, maybe you wouldn't have had that relationship. Because I see that you have a relationship. And that was a good one. But if you don't tell anybody you have this history, they wouldn't know. Yes. And just because you came to that realization and then you changed. That was a great, 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 great one. And then again, you mentioned about your strength, you know, um, bringing, being a role model to them. Yes. Mirror him. Yes. Mirror him, mirror him, whatever you want yes. them to be, you are role model them. Yes. You, know? you want them to go to church, you are you are doing the same thing and you model the way you want to live so that they can keep one or two things from you. And then you allow them to make choices as well, which is very good. Thank you for that, for that. And mm -hmm. you mentioned something about your own um because you know, we always I, I don't want this video to be that long, but still there's a lot of lessons to be learned from it, you know. So you mentioned something about um, your parents, the way you were um, treated as a child. Um, okay, before saying that, do you have any struggles? And uh, what are the struggles? If you have struggles, what are the struggles? I mean, I know you might have mentioned your struggles now when you were talking about the, the and how you overcome your um, that struggles. Is that, mm. is that the same thing, or do you have any struggles, or is there any struggles now? Um, well, well, yeah, that's that's mainly, you know, the struggle, but uh, uh, I don't know, I have this soft part in me that, uh, with the kids as well, that um, since I I become a parent, uh, the, the thing, I, I could not be very um, strict, even though I grew up, uh, you know, with my parents strict. I was like um, kept under this control. Um, maybe that's why I don't know. I am I'm the opposite, or because um, I I think that I don't know. It's a struggle. It's a weakness again. Uh, you know, when I I tell my kids, um, "Oh, you're not going there," because you didn't listen to me. Now mm. it's like a, you want to punish them or you want to mm. teach them a lesson. And say, so, oh, today you're not going to that party. But sometimes in me, the child in me will be like, oh, I really want to go to that party. Why did I say that to my child? Because I'm not going to really keep him home. And then, you know, a few hours later, uh, we'll be like waiting for the child to say, sorry, mommy, for whatever mm -hmm. I was. And then if he wouldn't say, I will go to him. I say, oh, have you something to say? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And they'll be like, yeah, what, what? And I say, well, remember what we were yeah. doing earlier. And then they might say sorry. And they're like, oh, okay, we, we, let's get ready. We go to the party. But, you know, uh, sometimes I think I should have been um, strict. And if I was yeah. to keep my word, you know, yeah. but um, I'm, I'm a softie. And really, yeah. they can play me very easy. And they, yeah. I can just let go things very easy, you know, I'm not yeah. very strong in that side. Mm. But um, struggles, it's, I think struggles, we all have struggles like every day, yeah. you know. In, so in, our soft spots. 
Like yeah, you, and in, in, in yeah. every area of, of the life, it's a struggle, it's a, you know, but mm -hmm. like I said, I think, I think sometimes it's, it's um, not to, uh, not to just remain quiet and just uh, deal with that yourself. Sometimes, you know, like I said, there are things that you can bring to, to your parents, you can bring to your family, you can, um, you know, say to a friend. Mm. But then you always have God, you know, that you can go in prayer and, and tell him your struggles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's there. He's, he's the best friend, yeah. really, to, mm -hmm. to listen to you listen and to, to help you, you mm -hmm. with the struggles. Yeah. So, so um, this is a nice, nice one. But I think what we're going to go, we, we are going to go now on this. But we're coming back. We're coming back. We're still continuing on, but we want to stop this. This is going to be the part one. We go for a break and then... Um, you are going to watch the part two um, right after this. So we're still going to continue because you see us wearing the same clothes. But for this part, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Um, they're expecting to go straight to part two of this so that we can call this and go on. If you want to learn about her, uh, she's going to compare her own parenting style to her own parents' style and think about her. Uh, we still have a little bit of things, you know, um, and stuff, the advice and everything. So stay tuned after this. Please go to the part two and watch the part two. But for now, we say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. We're going for a break. And then let's appreciate our, our, our guest here. She's done an amazing job, isn't it? She mm -hmm. has learned. She, ha she was actually truthful with all, and that's all we need somebody that will be truthful, that's not going to hide anything from us so that we can learn and then help ourselves and then we know oh, I'm not the only one here. Oh she's going through this oh okay, okay I can I can identify with it. Oh this is me she's talking about here, you know, and be able to make it turn around. She made it she made it turn around. Isn't that yeah. great? And then she had that. So we come back until then. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.